3.3, centripetal force. Recall, and this is from all of our studies so far in physics, that acceleration must by the must be caused by the net force acting on an object in the direction of the acceleration. And what does this tell us? Therefore, centripetal force, which is the force in uniform circular motion, is directed towards the center which is exactly the same as our centripetal acceleration. So from Newton's second law, my centripetal force Fc is therefore mass multiplied by my centripetal acceleration. Therefore, we have three different formulas for centripetal force as well. We have mv squared over r. We have 4 pi squared mr all over t squared. And we could also have our centripetal force as being 4m pi squared r f squared. And the f squared comes from the fact that t is equal to 1 over f, or f is equal to 1 over t, because they are inverse relationships. So basically what I have set up for this lesson for you is multiple examples that we can go through solving different styles of centripetal force problems. And here's the first one. My apologies, I couldn't really shorten it any bit. This is as best as I could give you. <clears throat> and it is a sled, has a mass of 20 kilograms, rests on the horizontal sheet of frictionless ice. We give it a push and it is attached to a four meter rope to a post that's set in the ice. And when we give it push, it revolves uniformly in a circle around the post. It makes five turns every minute, and we are looking to find the force exerted. So, systematically, we have our radius R, we have the post in the ice, and if I have my sled, which anybody who knows me well knows that I'm not that great of an artist, but there's somewhat a representation of a sled. And when we give it a push, it's going to go in a uniform circle, a true circle, which we do not see in this case. I tried my best. And given here, we know that our mass we have is 20 kilograms. Our radius R as given in the question, is 4.00 meters. And my period T, well, five turns every minute. There's 60 seconds in a minute and five turns. That tells me my time it takes to complete one turn is 12 seconds. If I have my sled as a free body diagram, picture this on the ground. The force of gravity is going to be acting down and I'll have that normal force acting in the opposite direction. These two are equal values because our 
sled stays in contact with the ground. We know in this case that my sled is accelerating, let's say, towards the center. Therefore, my centripetal force will be acting towards the center as well. So we'll call this our positive x direction towards the center. Since there is no acceleration in the y direction, this merely becomes a case in the x direction that my net force is simply the centripetal force, which is determined mass times acceleration, in this case centripetal acceleration. So therefore, Fc is 4 pi squared mr all over t. I knew to cho choose this equation for centripetal acceleration due to the fact I have my period, my radius, and my mass. I can make all of those substitutions into the equation. So 4 pi squared, 20, and my radius in this case was 4.00, and that's all divided by 12 squared. Using a calculator, we would get a final answer to four significant digits before I round 21.93. Therefore, the force exerted on the rope is 20 newtons towards the center. Okay, so there's one type of question that I might ask you to complete, basically given, find the centripetal force. Now we get to see my fantastic artwork. In example two, we have a car rounding a flat, unbanked curve with a radius of 230 meters. We have a coefficient of friction between the tires and the road of mu s 0.87. We're going to find the maximum speed at which the driver can take the curve without sliding. So if I have a road and some car that's on that road, There's my beautiful artwork. I'm complimented about it all the time from my wife and my soon-to-be, when my son gets older, hopefully he will compliment it as well. However, this car is going to be taking this curve. I went off on a tangent there, my apologies. We do have this radius here, and we know that that radius, as given in the question, is 230 meters. In this question, I'm also given mu s as 0 0.87. That's all the information that I'm given. If I take a look here at my free body diagram, I know that my gravitational force and the normal force will cancel each other out, and I have my force acting in the center direction. This force that is acting in the center direction is going to be my centripetal force. We'll come back to look at that in one second. Acceleration, centripetal acceleration is going to be towards the center as well. Let's observe this in both the x and the y direction for a moment. If I observe my y direction first with up being positive, I see that my net force in the y direction will be my normal force minus the force of gravity, and that will be zero because it is at equilibrium. 
this tells me that the normal force will be equal to my gravitational force. Now, why is that important? We'll find out in just a second. But that means that the normal force is my mass multiplied by my gravity. And if I notice in my x direction, if I call center seeking positive, my net force is going to be my centripetal force, which is mass multiplied by centripetal acceleration. So that is Fc is mv squared over r. But in this question, what I'm looking for is the maximum force that helps the car around the corner. Well, the only way that that can happen is if my maximum force is my force of static friction. So therefore, instead of centripetal force, what is actually it is, is we're looking at static friction. It's static friction that's helping the triple force around the corner. We're looking for the maximum. My static friction, I know, is mu s fn. But fn, in this case, is mg. And since I have masses on both sides of the equal sign cancels out, I must multiply both sides of the equation by r. So that tells me v squared it's mu s g r. So v will be calculated by taking the square root of mu s g and r. So that will give us the square root of 0 0.87 multiplied with 9.81 and 230. which is 44.3, two significant digits. Therefore, the maximum speed is 44 meters per second. And you know what? Let us look at one more example after this. with the car driving again. However, in this case, so let us see what we have in this question. We have a car, and it's going on a bank on a road, so a bit of an angle on this road. There's my drawing, and it's going to be going around the corner. So. Using a free body diagram, we can observe this a little bit easier. We know that this is going to be on some type of angle. Our car, which we're just going to go flat for now, force of gravity, normal, oh, sorry, not normal force there, some um, other guy. My normal force, because it's going to be on some type of angle, is there here. So let's just keep this one as F1 for now and we're going at some angle theta. We know that my acceleration is centripetal, center-seeking yet again. And let us see what we have to help us out with this problem here to determine our angle theta. And remember this right now, theta is above the horizontal. Break this up into its separate x and y components. Let's look in the x direction first, assuming that center seeking is positive. We have that our net force is simply centripetal force, which is mass times by centripetal acceleration. Now let us see this right here. This is theta, opposite and adjacent. That's good to know. So we know that this is technically Fn cos theta. So my centripetal force in this case is represented with Fn cos theta will be equal to mv squared, and all of that will be divided by r. <clears throat> I see in this case 
that my F1, which I've drawn over here, it's going to be the same value, F1 right here, that will be Fn sine theta. <clears throat> so if I assume up is positive in the y direction, <clears throat> this gives us F1 minus Fg. And because this is at equilibrium in the y direction, will be equal to zero. F1 is Fn sine theta. And that will be equal to the mass multiplied by the gravity when I bring my force of gravity to the other side. So therefore, Fn is equal, rearranging this, mg over my sine of my angle theta. And remember, theta is what we are looking for in this case. This is extremely handy because I now have an expression to substitute in for Fn on my x component. So therefore, mg over sine theta will be equal to mv squared all over r. We will see that we can do some canceling out to help us solve. m's on each side the equal sign. Beautiful. I did forget to write cos theta there as well. Let me do that right now for you. So, what do we have? Let's rearrange this. I'm going to multiply both equations by sine theta to get rid of sine theta on the bottom. I'll also divide by cos theta to get rid of cos theta on top there. Reason being is because we should know what sine theta over cos theta is equal to. So what does this mean? I need to get rid of r over on the right hand side. So gr all over v squared is sine theta over cos theta which is handy because what we now have is that tan theta is gr over v squared. So therefore tan of angle theta is 9.81 multiplied by 250 all over 24.4 squared. Oh, I forgot to mention that. 24.4, where did that come from? In the question, we had 88 kilometers per hour. To convert from 88 kilometers per hour, we divide by 3.6 to get 24.4 SI units for speed meters per second. Back down here. So this gives us tan theta will be equal to 4.1194. So theta will be tan inverse. And we can calculate this to be 76 degrees. Now let us look back just briefly. This is 76 degrees above the horizontal. We like our angle measurements to be lower than 45 degrees. So therefore, the bank should be 14 degrees from the vertical. And that's everything that you need to know really in a nutshell for centripetal force.